In this video, we're going to be going through Vetus's brand newly released 2020 mountain bikes. I thought it'd be a cool idea because they've just released all these brand new bikes is to take you guys through pretty much the entire mountain bike range that Vitas are offering for 2020 and give you a bit of insight into each of the bikes. And also at the end of the video, or towards the end of the video, I'll give you some personal feedback on the 29er Summit, which is Vitas's 29er 160, 170 mil travel Enduro Beast. So make sure you stay around if you are in the market for something like that. So just to point out, we do ride bikes for Vetus. We are what you'd call brand ambassadors. By no means is this a paid video or anything like that. We just thought this would be a cool idea to do off our own backs and just to give you guys a bit more exposure to how cool these bikes actually are because I don't think they get as much recognition as they should. You might be wondering where Amanda is. She's actually at the vets today. You probably notice it's very quiet as well. Kai isn't around. Kai is at the vets as well. There we go, Kai's busy at work. Sit! You can play! So when we're talking about full suspension bikes, Vitas has pretty much got three main bikes. They have their 130mm travel Mythic bike, which is a bike that I think me and Amanda are so excited to ride. 140 or 130mm travel trail bike, comes in both 27 or 29 inch wheels and is literally their kind of step into the market for a bike that literally can do anything. For instance, living in the UK now, being based in the UK, I think this Mythic bike would be an absolutely perfect all around bike for pretty much most people within mountain biking. So the top of the range bike, it's an alley frame, it's got Marzaki Bomber Z2 140mm forks, it's got a RockShock Monarch R rear shock, it comes with a SRAM SX 12 speed stuff, Shimano brakes, Brand X dropper seat post, and some tubeless ready Swab tires. Now, when you look at this bike, the high spec bike, isn't as high spec as you know like a, Sh a shimano xtr and Sh shimano xt build but if you look at the price point for this bike with the kit it comes with at retail it's for the top spec bike it's 1599 pounds let me get this straight through the before we crack on with all the other bikes vitas aren't inexpensive or less expensive than all the other bikes because the bikes are less quality. These bikes, and I can like put my hand on my heart and say that these bikes are absolutely insane. The quality is insane. They've just built their business in a way that doesn't have a middleman. So you either buy it through Chain Reaction or Wiggle. I think there's two places you can buy the bikes. The middleman isn't taking his cut and you, the consumer, the buyer is getting the best price for your bike. But don't ever think that you're getting like shortcutted for a, a cheap bike or a cheap like Halfords build bike or Walmart bike. These bikes are sick and they ride absolutely insane. And I can't wait to get my hands on the Mythic, especially the 29er version as well. So then we'll move up to the next level of bike, which is Vetus's Escarp. Vetus Escarp is offered in both 27 and 29 inch wheels, three specs across both wheel sizes. And this is kind of like your 140 mil travel bike that's a bit more aggressive than the the Mythic, the bike that has a slightly less bit of travel. So let's say for instance, you are based in the UK or Scotland or whatever. You like to go to some bike parks. You like to do a bit more like more aggressive style of riding. Maybe you take a trip to the Alps or like the, some bigger mountain riding once or twice a year. I think this VSS Scarp is probably going to be a fantastic fit for you. When we went to Ireland last year to test out uh, the Vetus bikes. The Vetus Escarps were the bikes that me and Amanda rode. I rode the, the 27 version of the Escarp and Amanda was actually on the bigger wheels, the 29er. Like we rode them on pretty much like full on downhill tracks and the bikes were ridiculously capable. And these bikes just, whatever you threw at them, they could handle it. At the same time, they could handle it, but they were also like real nimble and you could move the bike around a lot because it was fairly light. I guess the, the drawbacks are, it's only got 150 mil, 140 mil travel on the back, I think. So when if you did want to go out and do like, if you know, if you were doing a lot of big mountain riding all the time, I'd probably look at Vetus's next bike up in the range, which we'll talk about in just a second, which is the Summit. Uh, talk about price, I mean, again, extremely competitive if you compare it to any other brands out there on the market. The, the lower range bike starts from just over two grand, 2,299 pounds, and then the top of the range bike goes up to three, just over, just under 3,600 pounds. Again, you can't argue with the spec on these bikes. Like literally, you can't beat the spec on the bikes either. On top of the range, a Scarp 29er VRX. I'm looking at the 29er version now, and it comes in this real sleek, 
gold fade to black color. It looks like a badass. You know, the parts you can't complain about. I mean, top of the range Fox, Fox, top of the range Fox trail rear shock, race face carbon cranks, top of the range DT Swiss alley wheels, XTR rear derailleur on there, XT brakes. You literally can't go wrong and then it's got a nice nuke roof finishing kit on there. So all that for under 3,600 pounds is literally unbeatable. You'd compare that to any Santa Cruz specialized, any of the other top brands and I guarantee you'd be looking at between five and 6,000 pounds for the similar build kit on that bike is, is where I'd be shooting for. Okay, so we'll move up the range. And this is Vitas's, we'll talk about the Summit. So the Vitas Summit. Vitas's Summit is like a, well, again, it comes in 27 and 29. So you've got the versatility there, depending on what wheel size you prefer to run. Let me read the first line of the description to you. And this pretty much says it all. The all-in and Jura design of the 160 mil Summit frame is ready for anything. It's a race proven and capable on any terrain, attacking the downhills in search of bigger drops and steeper descents. If you're aiming for the Enduro podium, or you want to push your van to the limits on your favorite trail, the Summit 29 is with you all the way. Again, when you talk spec on these bikes, you literally cannot beat them. The XDR, XT stuff, carbon cranks, top the range DT Swiss wheels, top of the range Fox suspension. You can't ask for anything else. The 29er version of the Summit is, from what I can see, it's aluminium this year. And yet when you look at the Summit 27, I think that is available in both carbon and alloy. If you want a carbon Summit, you're gonna have to go with the slightly smaller wheel option. Again, I rode the aluminium version this year and I was, again, I was blown away by it. Again, pricing is very competitive. You know, when we're talking about the 29er Summit, Prices start from about £1,800 for the entry-level bike, and they go up to the top of the range XTR build, which is still under £3,900 for a full build with, again, just go and check out the spec of what you're actually getting for your money. Comparing that to another bike from bigger brands, you'd be looking at close to somewhere six, six and a half grand, I would say. And onto the bit that I'm, well, onto the bit we're pretty excited about, e-bikes. What the hell did you just say? I know what you're thinking. E-bikes are kind of like one of those topics, one of those categories of bikes where you either love them or you hate them. And most people that hate them, I'm guessing people who, who haven't actually ridden them properly yet. I'd say I'm kind of an exception to that because I haven't ridden an e-bike yet, which probably soon will change. I had the impression when, when e-bikes came out that they were they were for people who were not as healthy and fit as they used to be, so it makes kind of riding still more accessible, more fun, and that was kind of like their only market. But now as time has gone on and bikes have actually improved, I think this, like the, the, the types of people that buy e-bikes now and the range of markets it's opened up for people is completely changed. You could buy an e-bike now and you could literally go out on the bike ride and you could pretty much ride twice the distance as you would on a non-motored battery bike. That means you could do, if you could pedal up four times a hill without an end, without a motor, you could pedal up maybe eight, potentially more times with a battery. You could almost use it as like your uplift, if you like. You could literally ride up and down a, a road, lapping down all tracks out, which I know people do. It just gets you more miles. Like it doesn't mean you are less healthy or less fit because you've got an e-bike. 2019, 2020 is gonna be damn cool because they've got, Okay, we're gonna talk a bit about their e-bike actually. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the page now, I'm pretty excited. So Vitas are actually offering their e-bikes in both the Escarp and the Summit. There is, from what I can see, there's four different spec builds on each of the Escarp and the Summits in the e-bikes. About slightly about 3,000 pound, going up to about five grand for, for the e-bikes. Top of the range bike, again, is similar to what we talked about before. XTR, full Fox factory suspension, the works. The bike I'm most interested in, I think Amanda will be with me on this as well, is Vitas' eSummit VRS, which if I put it on the screen now, I don't know what you would call it. It's like the most unicorn kind of style bike you could come across. Or is it like Miami Vice even? Pretty damn cool. Purple, blue, bright orange Vitas logo on the rear triangle. This just gives me like real big motivation to go and get an e-bike. The only problem with e-bikes though is that potentially at the minute is a bit annoying to travel with them if you're going overseas because of the taking batteries on bikes and stuff and the weight and that sort of stuff. But I'm sure in the future they'll come up with a solution to that. If you look across the whole range of the 2020 bikes, one of the things that stands out about this year's bike range is literally how much the bikes stand out and the color of the bikes. And if we go back to where we were talking about the summits before, there's two summits that you know, we're both excited about, which is the top of the range summit in both the 27 and 29 build and the, the step down from that, which is the VRS. If you look on the page, it's actually a, 
it looks blue. The frame looks completely blue. But if you go deeper into the close-up gallery, you'll actually notice that the colors are actually pearlescent or two-toned. So they actually change colors from purple to blue, depending on where you stood looking at it, which I think is damn cool, damn desirable, and will make you stand out like a fart in a church. But now <sighs> I don't know if they've, they've, they've done this on purpose, well they probably have done it on purpose, but this colour paint job is called Angry Unicorn and it is literally purple, sparkly purple. Like, I mean look at it. Guys, if you want to stand out in 2020, just go and buy one of these bikes and then just send me a message and say thank you. Okay, so that's pretty much the range of mountain bikes Vitas are offering this year. I want to move on to talking a bit about the Summit 29er. Now I got the opportunity to ride this bike or this frame if you like about four or five months ago as like a, a test if you like. This is my first time riding a 29er bike properly going from a 27 wheel bike to a 29er and the difference is pretty much night and day. You ask anyone who rides a 29er bike and they'll tell you, if you ask them what the differences are to a 27 bike, they'll most likely tell you something about how the 29er is, is a lot easier to get over obstacles. So like whether you're carrying speed down a trail that's got loads of holes in it, the 29er kind of, the size of the wheels gets over those holes easier. You're able to go at the same speed without putting in any more effort than the 27 bike. So therefore that opens up a whole spectrum for you to go faster at a lot stable pace. If you're looking for speed, the 29er is definitely, I think is a faster bike than a 27 wheel bike. Personal opinion, some people may disagree. In terms of handling, uh, the bigger wheels <clears throat> were a bit different to get used to, I'll admit that, but I didn't really see that much difference in terms of handling abilities towards the 27 bike. It's, you know, you could argue on the tighter turn tracks that the bigger wheels are harder to navigate around stuff, but again, I think I still think the pros always will outweigh the cons from for my situation anyway, for racing, for big mountain adventure riding, that sort of stuff. It'll be interesting to see what Amanda thinks of the bike this year because she'll be riding the 29er in 2020. That'll be her first ride properly on a 29er bike as well, so it's going to be an exciting year. The one thing I did notice, I don't know if people will agree with this agree with me on this or not but i thought my summit 29 a bike the wheel size being 29 i thought it didn't pedal uphill as well as my 27 bike i don't know if that's just because the wheels are that little bit bigger that it means you have to put more power through the cranks just to get those wheels turning but then once they are moving it's kind of got a bigger mass that keeps keeps momentum going and keeps it keeps things rolling no real problems with the bike at all this frame is an aluminium frame to my knowledge they aren't offering a carbon 29er bike for the summits in 2020 i wanted to give you guys an honest bit of feedback on what i feel like the summit is like because i've never had a 29er bike before so in terms of sizing i used a large size summit so the large size reach is 470 mil i personally would like it a tad bit bigger but the extra large goes up to 495 mil reach so it may for me it may be worth trying the extra large with the short stem <clears throat> when i jumped on this bike from my 27 bike 27 bike was actually an extra large frame so this large frame was actually a lot smaller and it almost felt like i was kind of in the bike on the 29er rather than the other bike i was kind of reaching reaching forward almost like steering a boat round because i think the bike was a tad bit big the bike was the 27 bike in xl was great because it was so long so it was real stable again when it comes to the overall performance of the bike it probably could have done with being a tad bit shorter which the large summit was but looking back now i would like to try an xl summit 29er next year see so yeah, if you like the video Give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about any of the bikes we've talked about in this video, pop a comment below and I will try and answer it as best I can. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. That way we can grow and grow and grow and give you guys even more value. The more you guys like the stuff, the more we can keep creating some pretty cool stuff. I guess we'll see you in the next video, which will probably be a wet outdoor mountain style adventure kind of thing. So see you in the next video. Take care.